Mr. Speaker, as usual, I want to thank the people of Denry, Lakai, and Lime for the trust and confidence in me to represent them in this August chamber. Mr. Speaker, <laughs> I would also like to thank my wife and my two daughters, Vicky, Susan, Gustav, and Crystal Dennis, for the continuous support, guidance, strength to allow me to serve the people of Denry South at the highest level possible. Mr. Speaker, I stand in support of the Appropriations Bill 2024-2025, a budget, Mr. Speaker, with no new taxes. A budget, Mr. Speaker, that has something for everyone, and that includes the youth, our pensioners, our fishers, our farmers, our elderly, and our preschoolers, Mr. Speaker. This budget leaves no St. Lucian behind. Mr. Speaker, the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Food Security, and Rural Development continues to lead the charge towards enhancing food and nutrition security for the nation and is actively pursuing targeted interventions aimed at stimulating investment in the sector. These efforts will seek to boost production, particularly through the adoption of advanced technology and renewable energy sources foster innovation and creativity, and encourage youth participation in the sector. The global climate change phenomenon, Mr. Speaker, is rapidly impacting our food sources and supply chain networks in a negative manner. Across the world, very, every geographical region can relay catastrophic accounts of damage to lands, infrastructure, and crop losses. Mr. Speaker, if such issues are not addressed in a timely manner, the outlook for our future food security will become more challenging. A food and nutrition security strategy and action plan 2022 to 2025 was developed by the Ministry of Agriculture inclusive of strategies to address those new and emerging challenges that impact food security at the national level. These challenges include increasing vulnerability to natural disasters, and that includes hurricanes and droughts, and shocks, also including pest and disease outbreaks, high input costs, farm labor shortages, and limited market access and water unavailability. Mr. Speaker, the agricultural sector is under serious threat by climate change. Last year, August, we experienced the hottest month in the year. And obviously, Mr. Speaker, that would have significant negative impacts on yield and production of crops. According to the publication entitled Towards Sustainable Food and Nutrition Security in Latin America and the Caribbean, in response to the global food crisis 2023, the successive negative impacts of COVID-19 and the war in Ukraine affected Latin America and the Caribbean access to food and key inputs for regional agriculture, with poverty being an important factor. In addition, Mr. Speaker, the increase in prices for food and fertilizers exacerbated because of the war in Ukraine affected the region, especially small island developing states in the Caribbean that are net food importers. Although the drop in international food, energy, and fertilizer prices in recent months has provided some relief for countries, prices are still above 2021. 
With this context, it is paramount that there be improved cooperation and regional integration through multilateral, multi-level, and multi-stakeholder processes. Today, Mr. Speaker, what is at stake goes beyond combating hunger and malnutrition in all its forms, addressing poverty and inequality, and promoting sustainable development. Mr. Speaker, at the CARICOM level, St. Lucia is contributing to the 25 by 25 initiative where countries have pledged to reducing the food import bill for a reduction in imports of at least 25% by the year 2025. This initiative, Mr. Speaker, is expected to boost production of selected crops and increase output in the livestock, livestock subsector with a renewed focus on poultry, pork, and small ruminants. And I'm sure you will recall since 2018, Mr. Speaker, CARICOM established a target of reduction of our food import bill by 25% in the year 2025. Egmobile dit ça en patois pour tout le monde copain. En 2018, CARICOM where that it be exorvé that pays en Caribbean en Caribbean là ka importé en chai manger that nous sa produit en ti pays nou. Et yo établi un percentage of 25% pour nous garder qui manière nous qu'il descend à sous toutes ces produits nous qu'a mener cette ici là on aller en ces supermarché là on va voir ces concombre là on va voir ces trois pommes là on va voir ces moulons avec un chai ces bagages ça là nous qu'a trouver importer bon ma ca dit nous n'a problème pour importer bagages nous qu'a manger mais ça caribe la quoi dans nous supposer faire primaire pour produire ces manger nous qu'a importer cette ici Mr Speaker the OECS member states has launched a food and agricultural systems transformation fast in response to CARICOM's goal to reduce food imports by 2025 by 25% with consideration for the particular challenges of the OECS subregion the strategy aims to establish competitive and sustainable food and agriculture production, processing and distribution practices that will result in increased consumption of affordable quality and nutritious food, increased food self-reliance, and increased social and economic development. As the FAST strategy acronym suggests, OECS agricultural leaders have committed to delivering on the actions urgently racing against the growing impacts of climate change and related hazards, which in recent times, Mr. Speaker, have repeatedly affected food and agriculture in the region. Since the launch of the OECS Council of Ministers of Agriculture, have conducted, conducted prioritization and technical review exercises, national agricultural strategy alignments, and engagements with the private sector and international partners. Mr. Speaker, I would like to acknowledge and support the arrangements with St. Vincent and the Grenadines for the implementation of the FAST strategy. St. Vincent will assist by establishing what we call a food and nutrition security center, which will play a pivotal role in coordinating the implementation efforts across member states. The food and nutrition security center will be instrumental in analyzing the private sector's status in food production, establishing a register of agricultural sector civil servants for regional expert, expertise, sharing and ensuring regular reporting and alignment of activities towards the implementation of the FAST strategy's priority action. So Mr. Speaker, considering the importance of the, of the sector and the continuous role it plays in terms of ensuring that we are food secure, the OEC Com OECS Commission saw the need to establish a food and nutrition security center in St. Vincent to help address the situation with regards to food and food security, including all the challenges faced 
in the sector. Mr. Se Mr. Speaker, I now will take a little time to focus <clears throat> on the banana industry, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in addition to its high vulnerability to weather shocks, the banana sector faced a multitude of challenges during 2023. There were further increases in the cost of agricultural inputs such as fertilizer and packaging material. In the first half of 2023, in response to these rising costs, the government continued to subsidize inputs along donations from friendly governments to enhance fruit quality and production levels. Uh, Zafé Figla, industry Figla, ka ale fru an shy challenges. Sa se different ti bagay ki ka affecte industry, except pa sa, sa pa bagay ki nef, sa pa bagay ki, ki nou ka tan premye fwa. Tou le lane, la, lane hurricane, banan ek fig se se premye bagay la ka touve affecte. Ek ou sav, lane passe an jen, Nous tenions hurricane qui a affecté 75% of banana industry. And Mr. Speaker, that in terms of estimate of damage, Mr. Speaker, it was a total of $28.6 million, Mr. Speaker. Fama par des avant figure from depuis les affaires pour venir en novembre. Mr. Speaker, the effects of the storm led to significant drops in shipments to the largest producers in the region. Additionally, banana output was negatively, negatively impacted by higher than normal temperatures, a rise in black cicatoka disease, and the exit of some farmers since the termination of shipments to the UK. Mr. Speaker, in December of last year, when we realized that farmers were ready for harvesting and export of the bananas following tropical storm breath, we brought all the exporters to the Ministry of Agriculture to discuss the way forward because we knew that we were going to experience a surplus in production and we, would, we thought it was necessary to bring all the private exporters together to discuss the matter. Our technical team from the Banana Management Unit did offer a forecast in terms of productivity levels between December and March, Mr. Speaker. And so we were hoping that all our farmers would have been prepared, our exporters would have been prepared to deal with the surplus in terms of production of bananas and planting. Mr. Speaker, that went well. But surprisingly, Mr. Speaker, in March, the first week of March, Mr. Speaker, I got a call from one of the exporters that we had a problem with unavailability of boxes and packaging material for bananas and planting farmers. Mr. Speaker, I would like to provide an overview of the impact of the disruption faced by banana and plantain farmers who sell their fruits to the local independent exporters during the period March to April 2024 due to the lack of banana packaging materials in the local market. The boxes are generally and historically purchased from the locally based commodity packaging company called Winera. The main problem emanated from Winera's inability to produce or make available the required boxes during the period due to equipment breakdown and operational downtime. Winera, tous les années, ka service equipment yo, et le yo te ka fe sa, même le l'année an equipment yo kwe corrugator, et corrugator an se equipment ki wes kon sab, to produce a bread fig la, ep se bread banana. Ep machine sa la touve koi, pa de ka toavay, ep yo dene pou order a machine sorti an China. 
Mr. Speaker, when I got news of that, I immediately contacted the management of Winera. And I was told of the situation. But at the time, Mr. Speaker, I was informed that a new machine was on its way from China to St. Lucia. I was told by the management of Winera that the issue of boxes would have been solved by the last week of March. Only to find out, Mr. Speaker, the material that was supposed to be coming from the Dominican, the Dominican Republic, Mr. Speaker, was not available. I immediately engaged Ms. Sunita at Export St. Lucia together with my PS and team at the ministry, and we contacted the Dominican Republic and made a request for 17,000 boxes. Mr. Speaker, the boxes were due to arrive two weeks after the request was made, only to find out when the boxes left the dumb rep, the ship or the vessel went to Jamaica and the boxes were left in Jamaica and as a result did not arrive at the stipulated two weeks period. Mr. Speaker, I experienced some sleepless nights because the farmers kept calling and calling because obviously with a surplus of bananas, they would definitely need to be harvesting on a weekly or fortnightly basis, basis because their income would have been affected. I engaged the Minister of Agriculture in St. Vincent, Mr. Speaker, to see what could have been done in terms of getting boxes. We were told that the factory in St. Vincent was not in a position to provide boxes because of other requests. I made contact with an individual in Miami, Mr. Speaker, and we were able to secure 12,000 boxes. The boxes arrived in St. Lucia last week, Tuesday, and as we speak, the exporters have begun exporting bananas to the region as of last week, Tuesday. But Mr. Speaker, the request that we made in the Domrec at, um, at the Dominican Republic is yet to arrive in St. Lucia. That's three weeks now, Mr. Speaker. And so I was told that sometime tomorrow we'll be receiving a shipment of 17,000 boxes from the Dom Rep. I also engaged the management of Winera yesterday, Mr. Speaker, and I was told that they begin production of boxes for planting and bananas as of Monday of this week. And so we have in stock banana boxes for our farmers and planting farmers because I understand, Mr. Speaker, as a farmer myself, what the challenges were. But Mr. Speaker, the good news is that a government who cares, a government who cares about our farmers, Mr. Speaker, and you would recall in the Prime Minister's presentation day before, Mr. Speaker, that an amount of half a million dollars will be made available to compens compensate our farmers for the loss. So, C'est nous n'y presque 400 pour 450 femmes qui ont produit figues en cette ici. Et nous comprenons la situation qui est à l'effroi, là ils viennent pour boire pour figues et bananes. Et puis moi, une vidéo côté ces femmes qui ne peuvent couper ces régimes figues là parce qu'elles étaient mises à l'épée. Et obviously, ça n'est pas un bagage nous avons un gouvernement, moi avons un ministre agricole qui a voulu ouais pour ces femmes. Là, les gens qui ont pris toutes les commandes, moi qui ça nous a fait. Mais nous, ouais ça manière ça affecte l'industrie. Et puis le gouvernement saint ici j'a alloqué half a million dollars pour aider les femmes qui pouvaient affecter as a result pour la production de boîtes là. Moi, je l'ai dit, ces femmes ne sont pas compensées tout pour tous ces dommages-là. Nous avons un petit assistant pour aider, pour isoler et pour vivre, garder qui manière ça continue la production. Mais je l'ai dit, les femmes ne sont pas 
dat nou ka bay moun l'argent pou don figyo ki touve domaje. Nou ka bay an ti assistant pou edo si ou tete, bigaz mwen sa pou tete pou peye twa bay yo, pou tete pou lim lot depans ep nou sav ki manye sa ka etouve anfekto. So Mr. Speaker, I am very happy that we currently have boxes on island and our farmers can continue to take advantage of this opportunity. But Mr. Speaker, while I am on farmers, we have very, very, very good news for the persons in the agricultural sector. The government under the unleashing of the Blue Economy Project, financed by the World Bank, in receipt, is in receipt of 10 million US dollars, Mr. Speaker, under the Contingent Emergency Response Component, or CIRC. Nous need 10 million, ça c'est presque 20, I see the member for um, Central Castro smiling. Nous need a sector agricole la presque 27 million dollars, Mr. Speaker. And that money, it will be to support in areas of fisheries, livestock, and the crop production subsector, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, two months ago, Mr. Speaker, we distributed to our farmers 34,000 bags of fertilizer, Mr. Speaker, free of charge. Free of charge. We targeted 3,356 farmers, Mr. Speaker. We are currently working with the government and people of Venezuela to receiving another 40,000 bags of 50 kg fertilizer for our farmers free of charge, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we have begun the distribution to our livestock, livestock farmers of 500 1,000 gallon water tanks. 600 yon mil gallon water tank nou ka bay sa pou se livestock farmers la because nou sav kon atuelman ou ka ale flou sa yo kouye an dry spell. Mr. Speaker, we are going through a dry spell and rainfall is at its lowest during this time of year. But we know our farmers have to you know, use water to clean the pens and to feed the animals, Mr. Speaker. Water timely intervention. 500 farmers will benefit from the availability of one, a 1,000 gallon water tank. Mr. Speaker, under the World Bank project, we are in the process of procuring 32,000 bags of agricultural lime. Mr. Speaker, the agricultural lime is a product that is used to create a balance in terms of the soil acidic content. So you have what we call alkaline and acidity. But we are suspecting a lot of our soils are acidic and as a result, that can reduce yield. And acidic soil, even if you apply fertilizer four times a week, it will not absorb the fertilizer because of the status of the soil. So nous ka wè sa sa bay ki important et nous ka fè avant that was something that we were giving our farmers during the time of SLBGA, Mr. Speaker. And so we are making available free of charge to our farmers 32,000 bags of agricultural land. Mr. Speaker, we are going to repair every single greenhouse on the island under the project. Every single greenhouse on the island, Mr. Speaker, we are going to repair and we are going to bring in new greenhouses to assist our farmers with production. Farm labor. Farm labor, Mr. Speaker, it's been a challenge for our farmers in terms of getting labor on a consistent basis on the farms. Laboué, Carvignan, gros problème pour ces farmers. Et puis nous quoi ça c'est un bagage qui vous est en attention. Farmers have con, um, contacted me to see whether we can get laborers from countries like Haiti, India, and other countries, Mr. Speaker. 
And as a result, under the program, we are going to commence a farm labor program as of the first week in May, Mr. Speaker, comprising of 100 plus workers who will be going to the various farms to assist farmers with labor. We are also providing to our farmers, Mr. Speaker, funding for what we call on-farm drainage. So I know constituencies like Denry South, Denry North, Viewfort North, Castries, Ancillary Canaries, Sufre <laughs> will benefit, and areas like um, Babono will benefit from that, Mr. Speaker. And what we want to do is the areas where we think that those areas are very challenging, Mr. Speaker, we will be making an av um, available to our farmers some funding to assist them with on-farm drainage. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, you would have heard of the seven crops program, Mr. Speaker, that's get towards assisting our farmers and to ensure that we boost our food production and reduce our food import bill. Mr. Speaker, we have added a number of new varieties to the seven crops, and that includes eggplant, carrot, dragon fruit, fruit Mr. Speaker, and cucumber, Mr. Speaker, to increase the seven crops from what it was originally in, 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 intended for to 12 varieties, Mr. Speaker. Under the budget for 2024-2025, an amount of $1,944,000 was approved, Mr. Speaker. We are hoping that we will continue to support our farmers and to ensure that we reduce our food import bill. Mr. Speaker, still under, the, still under the World Bank project, Mr. Speaker, we are procuring new breeding stock, animal stock, Mr. Speaker, because we are in the process of commissioning our new agricultural station in Volet Miku, Mr. Speaker. And as a result, Mr. Speaker, we are bringing in from the U.S., Mr. Speaker, a hundred and 54 new bloodlines, Mr. Speaker, as of the first week in May. Currently, we have a team of persons from my ministry who are now in the U.S. selecting the animals, Mr. Speaker, and we are hoping that this will go well for the opening of the, of the agricultural station in Miku. And to just name it, Mr. Speaker, we are bringing 47 pigs, 98 sheep and goats, and eight cattle, Mr. Speaker. So we are going to boost the station with new breeds, Mr. Speaker. And that is at, I, the member for Miku North wants me to repeat, that is the new agricultural station in Volet, Miku. We are also going to construct an artificial insemination laboratory, Mr. Speaker. And we are also going to provide water tanks, as I mentioned earlier. Mr. Speaker, in terms of the fisheries component, Mr. Speaker, we are going to be producing 10 new fads to our fishers, Mr. Speaker. So every com fishing community, Mr. Speaker, will receive another fad, Mr. Speaker, in addition to what they had recently. Mr. Speaker, more good news for the fishers, Mr. Speaker. We are going to purchase 10 new ice machines and each landing area, Mr. Speaker, will receive a new ice machine, Mr. Speaker. We are going to place navigational lights in strategic locations, Mr. Speaker, to assist our fishers when they are out there and when they are heading to port. Mr. Speaker, we commence a, the installation of a vessel monitoring device, Mr. Speaker, where fishers who encounter problems at sea, Mr. Speaker, will be able to make contact with the fisheries department or Digicel, Mr. Speaker, to be able to indicate where they are located and how they can get assistance to get to the, shores, to the shore, Mr. Speaker. And we have 300 new satellite tracking devices, Mr. Speaker. So far, we've installed 80, Mr. Speaker, and we are hoping that we'll continue to provide further support in terms of those devices for our fishers. Repairs to fishing facilities. 
Uh -huh. I'm sure those persons who went to the Daito in recent weeks or months will see a new fishing facility mm. on the Denu fishing port at Daito. Mm. Mr. Speaker, when you walk mm. into Daito, you will see a blue wave, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Everything painted in blue, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, it was very timely for 15 years, Mr. Speaker, nothing or very little has been done in terms of improving those facilities. Those facilities were donated to us by the government and people of Japan, but we did not have a maintenance program in place to ensure that these facilities continue to meet the needs of the fishers. And so, Mr. Speaker, we got an amount of 850,000 EC dollars, Mr. Speaker, to do more work in the various constituencies. So, Mr. Speaker, in Grosile, in Grosile, Mr. Speaker, you will see the construction of an administrative building, including other repair works. In Ancillary, electrical upgrade, procurement of water pumps and fire hydrants, replacement of LED bulbs, replacement of AC units, and servicing of a boat ranch. In Sufre, Mr. Speaker, I'm giving every constituency what they deserve, Mr. Speaker, on the, 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 pro, the project. In Sufre, replacement and upgrades to the electrical system and sanitary facilities. Chosel, repairs to the office and other buildings, tiling of the processing area and replacement of concrete slabs. View fort, Mr. Speaker. Repair to a, a leaking storage container which has to be housed within the structure, fencing of the perimeter, Mr. Speaker, and the upgrade of the boat landing strip on the slipway or ramp that needs to be replaced. Mr. Speaker, the Denry facility, obviously, we will see the fencing of the entire perimeter, Mr. Speaker, and we will be placing an entrance gate to ensure security and controls at the port. Mr. Speaker, if you go to Denry now, Mr. Speaker, you will see those bright lights, Mr. Speaker, that I think extends all the way to the islet. So if you're standing on the islet, Mr. Speaker, anybody from Denry will see and identify you standing on the islet. Mr. Speaker, that is important for us, for our fishers, Mr. Speaker, because our fishers continue to contribute to food and nutrition security. And as a result, we must, must assist them. The Castries facility, procurement of a 150 kVA generator, and yeah, because of the current generator is, is, is not working, Mr. Speaker. And the Savans Bay Jetty, replacement of some decking boards and uprights. Mr. Speaker, you realize you did not hear the mention of Mikunov, because last financial year, Mikunov received assistance from the Ministry of Agriculture for upgrading the facility, washroom facility there, Mr. Speaker. And I'm sure you would see in recent, although I was not responsible for this one, Mr. Speaker, but the jetty, the new Mikunov jetty is going to contribute tremendously to the plight of our fishers in Viewfort, in Mikunov. Mr. Speaker, you would recall Latin the last year budget presentation, a $1 fuel rebate was provided or given to our farmers and for our fish, to our fishes, sorry. And I was informed that our fishes are already benefiting from this gesture on the part of our Prime Minister as of last year. Mr. Speaker, I move to the Shozel fishing port. The fishers of Shozel have been experiencing challenges with excessive sedimentation in the Shozel fishing port since its construction in 2005. 2005. The government of Japan provided the government of St. Lucia with a grant aid to assess the situation and to develop countermeasures to reduce the sedimentation in the fishing port. After years, after years of research and community engagement, countermeasures were derived to reduce the frequency of sedimentation and improve the usability of the Suzel fishing port. These are the construction of a groin and underwater, underwater brick water, underwater brick, 
These long-term countermeasures will significantly reduce the sediment affecting the function of the Shozel fishing port and as such will enhance the working conditions for Shozel fishermen and improve their overall productivity. The efficiency and safety of offloading the catch will be enhanced as well as the use, as the use of the port to secure the vessels, particularly during bad weather events. Mr. Speaker, an amount of five point over 5 million has been budgeted for in this new financial year to continue the works at the Sozel Fishing Port. We are hoping that, Mr. Speaker, we will see completion of this project very shortly, and we hope that this problem that our fishers have been face, facing, Mr. Speaker, will be a thing of the past. So, we have said that these people, these fishers, we have worked very well with the government to address the problem that they have suffered for the past few years. They have come to the situation where the sable has been bouché, where they have been able to do it with many times to do it with difficulty to do it. I am going to say that the government, the government of Japan, qui a bâillé le gouvernement cette ici pour aider ces pêcheurs pour adresser ces problèmes là. Monsieur le Président, I now move to the census of agriculture and fisheries. A major sub-point for the Ministry of Agriculture is the lack of data and information for planning and decision making purposes, especially for fisheries. Monsieur le Président, 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 in its quest to improve the availability of data and statistics in the agricultural and fisheries sectors, the Ministry of Agriculture has decided to conduct a new census of agriculture and fisheries in 2024. 17 years have passed since the last agriculture and fisheries census, which was conducted in 2007. Therefore, it is timely and way overdue, Mr. Speaker, to embark on the conduct of a new census that will provide data for a better understanding of the current state of agriculture and the structural changes that have occurred in the last decade. The need for detailed and up-to-date recent agricultural statistics, Mr. Speaker, to assist in the formulation, monitoring, and evaluation of policies, programs, and projects, training and capacity development, research, and marketing, among others, cannot be overstated. The census, of, of, the census of Agriculture and Fisheries will capture vital statistics with regards to the changes in the structure and scope of agriculture, agriculture and fisheries in the country over the past 17 years. This data is essential for planning, policy development, and decision making. So, in the next year, we will create an agricultural and fisheries census. For information, this is important for us because 17 l'année, nous pour côté ni en census. Et quand nous savons tant qu'a changé, climate change qui a affecté pêcher, et puis nous quoi il est nécessaire pour nous garder pour information qui neuf pour nous ça mettre en structure ensemble pour nous garder qui manière la vie pêcher, la vie femme qui a tout affecté. So in the coming months, Mr. Speaker, I want to inform our populace. Dans le cas où les gens qui viennent coincer la porte ou commander information, pas peur de l'information, parce que l'information c'est là important pour nous, pour nous garder qui manière nous qui continuer développer secteur pêche et agricole. Mr. Speaker, I now move to agricultural innovation, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the government through the commitment of President Ali will contribute to St. Lucia in the form of greenhouses, a value of 144,000 US dollars, Mr. Speaker. This will, be hydro this, will, this will go towards hydroponic systems which are climate smart and embrace sustainable agricultural practices. Hydroponics provide a practical solution to accelerated food production, increase yields, and contribute to resilient, a resilient food system. These structures will focus on the production of leafy vegetables and fresh herbs. In 2021, Mr. Speaker, over $86 million was spent in the region for imports of lettuce, 
to meet or kill salary, etc. This investment is intended to assist with reducing imports on items such as lettuce, tomato, and cabbages, especially given obligations on the CARICOM 25 by 25. Uh, Janvier, Premier Ministre, um, um, Honorable Philippe Jepier, engagez moi avec moi avec un team Sassé Guyana pour regarder qui ça y a fait les venir pour jeunes moun avec différents bagages qui neuf en agricole. Et nous allons côté côté nous l'année en place l'année en chaise ça nous a créé ces greenhouses là. Et nous y a planté combien différents qualités les gym à base ces ces greenhouses là. But what is important, Mr. Speaker, there is a youth engagement in, um, involved. L'année moun qui a créé l'école quand elle est là qui a fait SBA, l'année moun qui a créé là qui practice qui m'a pour planter qui m'a pour um, faire des fonds agricole. We have identified, Mr. Speaker, to accommodate this request, a site in Union, where we are going to place those greenhouses, we are going to engage the schools, we are going to engage the young people through the economy to assist in making this a reality. So, Mr. Speaker, I call on my people from Denry South, Mr. Speaker, our young people in Denry who are indicating an interest in agriculture. We will be providing training for those young persons, Mr. Speaker, to really help bridge that gap that we are experiencing in agriculture. We have a young people who are in agriculture and we want to help more young people in But these young Mr. Speaker, you don't have to come to do the same things as young people have They have to be innovative. We need to bring in new technology, Mr. Speaker, to attract them to generate an interest in agriculture. On the cook up, Mr. Speaker, may I ask? Um, what? Time. 19 minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on the cocoa enhancement project, Mr. Speaker, we are rehabilitating almost 150 acres of cocoa. And in this new financial year, we received an amount of $290,300 to <clears throat> develop and to address challenges in the cocoa sector. Currently, we have three contractors who are involved in the various parts of the country assisting in trimming and pruning of cocoa. Also, Mr. Speaker, we have 4,000 cocoa plants available at the Bath industry, and I'm calling on our farmers to take advantage of the opportunity for purchasing those cocoa plants at $2 per plant. I want to thank everyone, these young people who always want to plant cocoa with this lot of plants. We have a present 4,000 plants cocoa in the project to rehabilitate the plantation. And for that, we have to buy the plants for the plants for $2 per plant. Mr. Speaker, I will now take the the, the, the rest of my 15 minutes, Mr. Speaker, to talk about my constituency. I want to say that I am very happy that I am in the Parliament actually to represent and to do what I want to do to make the constituency of the South Primaire. I am in the position of the past because I have confidence in me. We have started to do a very good bagay en constituency a et mon vle continue faire tout ce lot bagay la ki nécessaire a i want to just remind you that the fishing port we spent four hundred and twenty thousand dollars mr speaker to repair the fish stalls improve drainage improve lighting painting of the facility repairs to the moorings kote se bot la ka pak la kote se peche a pati sa ale because se taya Et tous ces bagages qui étaient là, c'est la tente de gauche au fer qui dit que dommage est qu'on a ce qu'on a là. Nous ni un contracteur qui a travaillé à tout ça et puis nous avons hope that tout vite man you can finish ça. Mr. Speaker, we we painted the entire locker room buildings. Et nous peintir tout ça la porte là bas c'est plus cher. Nous allons continuer pour peintir côté mina et toilette là. Nous allons mettre ça en bleu. Nous avons aussi mené des nuits en ice machine neuf à bas programme ce cla. Mr. Speaker, I want our fishers to be able to purchase the ice right there on the fishing port, and they don't have to go to the valley and elsewhere to procure ice to 
freeze their fish. So it is a good project, Mr. Speaker. But further, Mr. Speaker, Nukai Fence whole facility here under the allocation of the $850,000 on the fisheries complex, we will be fencing the entire facility and we will be placing a main gate at the entrance to control traffic and other illegal activities. But Mr. Speaker, I want to go further. Our fish handlers, no, we are going to employ an individual to look at the cleanliness and everything that needs to be done in the fish clean area. Like we serve a shy semuna ko botek semuna ki ane tuipu sona kai kontan that nukai travel pio pu gare kimane nu sa fe la plime. Sa se ako te a shy moon ka sorti tout lot pei ka vini ka ane tuipu son. Ek nu ne pu ne an standard ko te le moon vini la yukai sa konfontab. You pakai we moon ka si dan le se stol la you pakai we se bagai sa la ko. So, Mr. Speaker, we are moving forward to address all those problems with the hope that our people will understand the value and importance of that facility and to do what is necessary to make it happen. Mr. Speaker, under the Community Tourism Program, 684,000 US to upgrade the Saturday Fish Fiesta. This was established in, two, in 1999 following the closure of Belfashan. And we are hoping that we can upgrade the facility to make it a top, top activity area in, in, the, in the country to attract tourists and to be able to ensure that there, is, there are economic benefits to the people of Denry South. May I tell you about this project, they are now saying it will be best suited to be placed at the, on the site of the old police station. We will be engaging you in, in the next few weeks to discuss those matters and to be able to ensure that we all are on board in, board in terms of the same um, in page to be able to decide as to where it has the greatest impact and how our constituents and others can benefit from it. The housing assistance program, Mr. Speaker, we've continued to provide assistance. We've continued to provide assistance not new houses like the past, assistance to persons who are living in deplorable conditions. We provide assistance under the house, new housing um, program, and we will continue to provide assistance to our elderly, our vulnerable, and persons with disabilities to ensure that they live a comfortable life. They, you do not see any um, roofs leaking, did not get wet when they are in the homes, Mr. Speaker. We were able to assist almost 75 persons under the last program, and we will continue to make that happen. We have started the construction or the rehabilitation of the new cricket building. Mr. Speaker, this, how this building has been in a very deplorable state, and sometimes when I visit that place to watch cricket or football, it, is, it hurts quite a bit to see that they do not have a place to, um, to urinate or to change, and the conditions were very deplorable, Mr. Speaker. But now we are rehabilitating this building with the hope that it will meet the needs of the sporting people. The, I'm pleased to announce the Professional Football League. I was happy to meet the request by the Denry football team, and Mr. Speaker, we provided the team with two new sets of football uniforms, and I am in the process of getting 30 pairs of football boots, 15 new footballs, because I know, Mr. Speaker, the Denry South football team will emerge victor victorious, Mr. Speaker, in this new competition. This is the best football team on the island, and I am warning my other colleagues to look out for the Denry football team. <laughs> I want to encourage our team to continue doing well. We've played two games, Mr. Speaker, and we have won both. So I'm just warning the others that we are looking out for them, and we will win this battle. Mr. Speaker, in Lakai, we 
began the construction of a new concrete road in the lower nursery area. That area was in a very deplorable state and we've begun the construction of a new road which I'm hoping will come to an end, will, will com be completed in the next quarter of this financial year. But Mr. Speaker, I'm concerned about some other roads like the road, the Boisjoli Road, the road going to Sylvie in Boisjoli, Sylvie Noelis in that residential area there, Mr. Speaker, we have to give this attention this year. The Green Mountain Road going towards Velde, and that road that continues to well fashion, we are hoping that we can give some attention to that. Mr. Speaker, I want to focus quite a bit on that road from that area I was staying called um, the bypass and to connect it to the hospital. Because for persons coming from the valley and other areas, in the event we have a natural disaster and the, and the village is flooded, you would have difficulty getting to the hospital. So I am going to take advantage to invite the minister to Denry South to look at a number of areas regarding road speed bumps, but especially that road going towards the hospital. Mr. Speaker, I want to take time Remember to invite... Remember, you have 10 minutes left. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, I want to take time to invite every St. Lucian to our Denry Carnival on the 29th and 30th of June. As you all know, Denry is the second best in St. Lucia when it comes to carnival. So I would like to invite everyone to our carnival. <laughs> and Mr. Speaker, um, in terms of Lakai, Mr. Speaker, currently there are two poles with lights on the football field. But the northern end of the Lakai playing field is very dark. So this year, I've already engaged a contractor to install two other lights at the northern end, that's by Helen, the end by Helen, so that our footballers in Lakai will be able to spend more time in the evening playing football or cricket, whatever the sport is. I want to just remind the people of Lakai and Lime that we are looking at the possibility of upgrading that road going to Lenish's place. That's by Helen at the top of Lakai. And we are also looking at, at a number of footpaths in addition to the footpath that was constructed from the Tyron tree. We are also looking at the possibility of how we can construct a new road going to Lume, Mr. Speaker. That's from the end where the Rastafarians are with an, an intention to assist those persons who have to walk a long distance from the main road to their homes. Mr. Speaker, I want to take time to thank my, the Minister for Finance for his budget presentation, Mr. Speaker. As I said earlier, everybody will benefit from this budget. There are new, no new taxes, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank my cabinet, cabinet colleagues for their support, advice, and all that they've been doing to assist me as the Minister for Agriculture, whether it's in my ministry or my constituency. My permanent secretary and staff of the ministry, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank them for their hard work. I want to continue working with them to ensure that we transform this agricultural sector. My team in Denry South, Dexter, Mary Skelly, Justina, and all those who are assisting me. Tino, Mr. Speaker, even if Tino has uh, issues with me, but Tino, <laughs> all the best to you. <laughs> Tino, Tino, and all those who may have the issues with the, the parliament, Mr. Speaker, there are times, Mr. Speaker, we will find our little challenges, the rep, but we are working together as a constituency to develop the constituency and make it the best we can. So I ask for your patience and understanding. It is not every time I can provide or give you what you require or request, but I always try my best to see how I can make it available to you. So, Mr. Speaker, with these few words, I want to again thank the Prime Minister for his presentation and to support the Appropriations Bill 2024-2025. I thank you.